Fisher Sisters. Fisher Sisters. I did pretty good with that song. You see me? I'm, I'm getting it. really good. <laughs> We're better together with Ann and Heather. Hi, everybody. You are listening to Better Together with Ann and Heather today. We have two gorgeous ladies joining us in the studio. We have the Fisher sisters, Trisha Lee and Jolie Fisher. I mean, it really does sound like a band, doesn't it? The Fisher sisters. sisters. We're going to jump right into In the Moment, everybody, and hear what Heather has uh, experienced this week that we could have no idea what it is. In the Moment. Last night I was with a friend having a little wine and maybe an edible or two and there were peanut M&Ms and I asked for one Yes. and out of the M&M bag came a yellow M&M and I'm like, oh, I don't like yellow. Yeah. So you put another M&M, you know, and he's just with the bag, like dumping it. Yes. It was another yellow M&M. So we know it was a he. Yes. And then it was another yellow Uh M&M. Uh-oh. And then it was another yellow M&M. It was nine Yellow M and M's. Did you check to see the bag was yellow M and M's? That was, I thought they were messing with me. Oh, but it was an actual real bag of M and M's, and so are, uh, so all of the yellows came out into my hand. Yes, and then it was filled with all the colors. So literally every yellow M and M went into my hand. Mm-hmm. So now, of course, I'm paranoid because of the edibles, yes. and I have all these yellow M and M's in my hand, and yes. it's frightening. Are they going to be good luck? Right. Are they going to be bad luck? Uh-huh. Are they going to be poisonous? Right. And what did you experience? Well, I ate them. Yes. And I don't know. Still it was today. last night. So, so they, we they have weren't to see poisoned. what happened. Ryan, we failed. We did not get Heather to tell an to interesting die. story. <laughs> 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 to die on the MF. You had to be there. Okay. Well, clearly you had to be so here. Weird. That's why it's called in the moment. Now. Is but there also, anything else? <laughs> also, you may recall, I can't I can't recall if I've discussed this on the show or not, but that's because you had too many M Ms. I drunk ordered a Peloton. Yeah, uh, yes. Do you remember that? I, I, I couldn't I, remember I the name of it. So I, I kept calling it Camp Pendleton. Because but my Well, that would be better because there would be sweatshirts my, or something. My, like I don't even have I have nothing to go on with this two wheeler that's now in your closet. Right, so my my Camp Pendleton arrived. Yes. Two women delivered it, which I thought was pretty cool. That's called a camp. <laughs> So now I have my Peloton. I got it on Sunday, uh-huh. which you was have a couple to- days ago, but I didn't have the shoes. So I ordered the shoes and sadly the shoes arrived yesterday. Oh, they arrived. But do you have to put the bike together? Is it or no, does done. it come? It's it comes all together. It comes all together. But so now so you paid extra for that. So now I have the shoes. I did not so now see I have you putting everything. on the wheels. Now I have it all. And it just is staring at me. Another like you said, it would. I have it all. Now, my challenge to Heather is... When I can actually hear, and I'm going to ask her a lot, and I, I would love this to be the, the Heather Duffy challenge. When was the last time you rode your camp Pendleton bike is going to be next week's question. Everybody can join in and ask. I would love her. I would love for her Instagram to get bombarded with. Did you ride it? Did you ride it? Did you ride it? Did, which also sounds kind of oh. sexy. Did you ride it? Did you ride it? Did you ride it? Or did you just have an edible and eat your M&Ms? Stay tuned for next week's in the moment. So far, I haven't ridden it. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I did realize, though, this week? One of the things that I want to do, because we have a, a friend who represents a plastic surgeon. And, I've, uh, you know, of course, I always want to do something. I'm I'm not opposed to anything that makes you feel better about what, what you're feeling inside. However, I'm also not opposed to anybody doing anything that would make uh, me prettier. Like, why not? So I always tease about having plastic surgery, but we never really actually do it. All of this crazy shit is going on with plastic surgery where they basically dump fat. They take your fat. It's like harvesting fat. Oh, we fat. talked about that. You could take the fat from my butt well, and put it in your face. Well, because you're always trying to lose weight and, and you're always telling me I don't eat enough. Not that I do. I, I do. I eat plenty. But I wasn't always trying to lose weight. It's just the COVID got me a little bit okay. lazy. We'll go with that. You know, the best. I got a dash of the COVID. I can just say to anybody right now, here's a helpful tip. Anybody, don't eat is what you're going to say. No. Well, if you don't want it on your ass, don't put it in your mouth. But I've said that before. But 
Here's a really helpful tip. If you want to make somebody feel good about themselves and you want to flatter somebody, the best compliment right now to give, this is the, this is an out of COVID compliment that floors everybody. Oh my God, you've lost weight during COVID. Because when somebody says that to you, you say that to me all the time. I know, and you're I think full it's of so shit. Funny. I think it's so funny. Everybody talks about how much weight they've gained in COVID. I'm like, why? I don't understand. Yeah. But anyway, you can still walk around the block and she rolls her eyes at me. But I just want to give the helpful tip. Like if you want to make somebody feel flattered just go god you fucking oh man did but you everybody you knows must have that lost weight in something it's some smoke and mirrors of what you're wearing <laughs> uh, anyway back to the plastic surgeon i thought that it would be really a very useful thing if a plastic surgeon would come up and invent a way to have you know friends come in together once once it has a little more than they would like and the other has a little less than they'd like like say in my boob area me and you is what so, you're saying right basically. so can i take the fat out of heather's ass not me personally you can even have some of my boobs and take some out of her tits too tits and ass bought myself a fancy pair tightened up my upper air did the nose should i get a nose job now too no, no let's just cut nose? the fucking shit out of me you know that they said when i before i came to hollywood like get it you're never going to be famous in hollywood if you don't get a nose job <laughs> this is the advice i mean i've gotten so much advice i should have listened to i'm saying you're ago. very famous thank you oh that's oh a, now that's a story okay so now on to how famous i am thank you i'm going to take heather's fat ass and put it on on my tits okay and then that we can be for ands. Oh, Jesus. Each other's Please ass. stop. <laughs> okay, no, you do have to talk about why I'm so famous. Okay, so we we had a lunch the other day. It was kind of like a first like lunch That's, out with Anne's team. I think that this is what we did put in the dummy files of something oh, to yeah. talk about. I think this was it. Um, so, so we go to actual lunch. So and so we go to lunch with Anne's manager and agent. Well, I have a new team of agents. And it, I, and, they're very and nice. And they're very nice. And um, I'm always hesitant to be represented by others. And here's why. Heather, why don't you tell the story? So <laughs> we were following up on some projects that we had been talking about uh, that Anne would be great for. And Heather is a businesswoman. They, so I, I don't, does the docket before we no, get this there. This is so ridiculous. I'm this embarrassed is, for you because that you're so impressed by this. I wrote, no, I made an agenda. An agenda. It's not a docket. And, and she's like, but even they Heather were impressed. Has put They're together like, this. Ooh, Heather's not an actress, clearly, because we never would have gotten a, 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 an agenda well, written might, by an actress. Actresses don't remember anything that they're up for, do they? We don't call them when they don't get it. That's why we just assume that they forgot. So like, hello. Oh, yeah, sure. I forgot the 10 things I met on already. So Anne's manager calls Welcome me and he's an like, what is this? What is this presentation you have? What is this deck you're presenting at the meeting? And I'm like, what are you talking about? And, and he's like, well, Anne said you have this, you know, pre I'm like, well, I said docket. I'm Obviously, like, I had the wrong word. You're talking about the fucking agenda? Yeah. It's like six bullet points. Right. I'll send it like, to you. And we sent it. But, but so she thinks so I'm funny. some sort of a genius because I've put together this agenda. Well, listen, we did do it together. But what, what I find shocking is that people do not. And I, I, I am saying this seriously. They would never think an actress would do that because they just assume that an actress remembers nothing well, or whatever. An the actress fuck. didn't do that. I did. No, so, I, exactly. But I approved. That's my stamp of approval. So we're there. And so we're going down the list. And one of the one of the agenda items is to follow up on some of the projects you've been up for. And uh -huh. this sweet man looks with a straight face and says, well, no, that's that one you were just you were just too famous for that they we, passed because uh, you, they were just you're just too famous just too for famous. that now, now this next one you're not quite famous enough for no, he didn't say that like, but like exactly <laughs> it's like i'm just right teetering on the borderline of like famous or too famous and i'm always just caught right in the middle now heather and i had had i don't even know why i was in my i don't know why i was hung over i know why you were but but it's <sighs> probably the same thing the two of us going to this meeting it's when Heather and I are together in a meeting. <laughs> are you going to talk about the pizza? In a meeting? N no. N no. Why However, is that? Is that too? We crack each other up. Like, we know already that we are going into a lion's den of 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 of, of like minefields for heather and me to navigate because we think everything is funny <laughs> especially when people try to act either really serious with us or really nonchalant or whatever it is oh we're surprised by the docket like you, you just like every single thing is a minefield the dossier a dossier is coming through <laughs> uh, let us pull it up on our iphones i can't look at her for half of it because 
You just, I'm just going to giggle. I didn't look at you. I didn't get hung over. I didn't look you in the eye when they said you were too famous. No, I'm I know. Like, oh, Cause we couldn't, I'm going to laugh would hard about that later. Our pants. We knew that this would be something we would joke about forever. So I am clearly too famous for this podcast. However, oh, I'm so that, showing up today. A week and a half of her oh. being too famous for ever. I'm like, will you pour me a glass? Uh, too I'm famous. Like, I mean, I'm too famous for that. It's it's still going on. I was, I was too famous for the photo shoot we did. I've been too famous for almost everything. I'm just since then I labeled it. So since yeah. last Friday, she's been too famous. No, for I everything. wasn't famous enough. And then now I'm too okay, famous for this then, conversation. Then I asked the waiter because I'm trying to think what is the easiest thing to eat? Because I am like a little bit concerned. I have mapped out my path to the bathroom bathroom because I think I might have to throw up because I am terribly hungover. And so the waiter, so I'm like, I'll just get a pizza. That's the easiest thing. And we thought we'd just like, share oh, it because okay, she's well, also pizza. hungover. And so I asked the waiter, I why. How, how big is the pizza? And they say 16 <laughs> inches. And we, and, and we looked at each other and we kind of started to laugh. And, and everybody at the table, I think they thought we were thought it was a dirty like joke, like a dick joke, like oh, 16 and Heather and, and crack up like five year old girls. Like, <laughs> but we know that what we're actually laughing at is that we're too stupid to know how big 16 to, inches like, we're is. Like trying to form 16 so, inches in our so, head, but we're too foggy. Like we so know it's more than 12 inches, I mean, I which bet is if I like thought a about foot, it, right? But I didn't know if it was going to be a personal tiny little pizza or if it was going to be enormous. <laughs> yeah, and 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 our and our bafflement over this made. <laughs> Four pizza minutes arrived. Table. 16 inches arrived. It turns at the out table. it's really big. It turns out it's a really big pizza. And we're like, we hope we have enough. <laughs> and we know they've been thinking but about their true. dicks. It's- and we've been thinking about math and like, wow, I thought I was pretty good at this. Is that lesser more <laughs> than a just, foot? I don't the, know. The Go, moment let's that look we it just, up on the calculator the later. Moment, I wanted to be like, hey Siri, how much 16 inches? <laughs> but I'm at the table and I can't. We're like, is it it was really it sad. It was really I was or, really sad for myself are, that I was that dumb. Are we in Okinawa? It was really sad. Or are we in Los Angeles? Oh good, 16 inches, and then it arrived 16 it inches huge. of bland pizza. That nobody. Well, now I know. I'll never forget. We will not forget what sixteen inches is. Yeah. I speaking of being too famous. Uh, can I get sixteen inches later? <laughs> <laughs> you want prosciutto on that? <laughs> oh, not shoes though. Pepperoni. Oh, <laughs> spice it up. Okay. Why? Why we are talking about pizza size? Listen, um, if you come back, I'm sure. You, here's what I can guarantee, Heather. Yes. You will be speaking to people more famous like than me. I'd like you to me. present me a dossier of what you're about to say. Well, it's bigger than that. It is? <laughs> it's like 16 inches worth of Fisher sister. Ooh, Ooh, that's a lot of Fisher. That's a lot of Fisher. Turns out that 16 inches is big. <laughs> more than we've ever known about the Fishers coming up. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Better Together with Anne and Heather. We are so delighted to have the two most beautiful uh, uh, lights in the room today, the Fisher Sisters. Yes, today we <laughs> melt, we welcome the Fisher Sisters Hello. to our Better Together tribe. <laughs> Trisha Lee and Jolie Fisher, they are our generation's last extension to old Hollywood royalty. Yes. As the children of Eddie Fisher <laughs> and Connie Stevens. But these two strong, open-minded, talented women have made their own names and paved their own success as actors singers, activists, entrepreneurs, a writer, and mothers. Right now, Jolie can be seen in the Lifetime movie, Girl in the Basement, and Trisha has taken her pre-COVID live performance to Instagram and can be seen every Sunday where she performs 70s on Sunday with her family. We are so, so (laughs) delighted to have you guys here. I think we want to start off, Jolie, of course, you wrote a phenomenal book, which we have read, Growing Up Fisher, and we would like to start today with one of our favorite quotes from the book Uh when you were... (laughs) Uh, you both you traveled with your mother so so very much. And one of the things you said that that we just wanted to cry over was when you said that you wanted to listen to your mother's music from the inside out. Can you talk about what that was to be with her and and how amazing that you said that when you were only three? We were years so old. tiny and we were so um I, I don't think that we were desensitized, but we were brought up in this world that I, that I like to call the fishbowl and <laughs> and and that we, you know, traveled the world and we saw places and things and people and learned about the good, the bad and the ugly. And I was a baby and I was curious and you were w- sleeping, I'm sure, because not much. <laughs> What's she was your like, age difference? 14 months. Oh, wow. Oh, my kind goodness. of like Irish, Irish twins. <laughs> <laughs> Jinx. We finish each other's. Sandwiches. 
Um, but I, I, I had disappeared and the baby nurse was like, don't be alarmed, Connie, but we can't find Jolie. And she was like, oh, well, I'm alarmed. You know, she's yeah. crying and sweaty and in a sequin gown. Is and that the baby nurse or your mom? Can you imagine if the baby nurse <laughs> lost your three-year-old? Yeah. No, don't worry about it. Yeah. She's don't be alarmed. Somewhere. <laughs> um, and they kind of, there was peep dancers and singers and musicians and now police looking for me. Oh and the concert mistress, the violin uh, chair, lead chair, came down with her long black gown. And she was like, she's sleeping. And um, and that's what I had climbed into the orchestra pit. pit. Yeah. It wasn't the first and it wasn't the <laughs> last. The last and you're still finding it like home. Yeah. Um, as uh, you just said, then maybe you're going to be starting a podcast from your bed. So there, maybe <laughs> you, you like to be in a comfortable position. Yeah. Uh, Get in bed with Jolie Fisher. Yeah. Right I mean, now. Who would want to? I'll tell you that. I don't know why I didn't think of that. Because, I, you know, I, I, I work from my bed yeah. all the time. I know. <laughs> these days. Office. These days. Well, I did before. I would like to blame it on COVID. But anyone who knows me knows that I, when I'm now with Zoom, I'm like, can they see? my headboard damn you it can. Be, you have to be you careful just have to prepare from here up yes right. that's what everybody pantsless. everybody's pantsless right now if you're listening we'd have no we, no skirts on none of us have pants. <laughs> Trisha, you as we've said you really are a part of, of the last royalty that hollywood knows and can you talk about what you've seen the most change from the time that was that was then to the non-elegance of now perhaps. yes <laughs> yes Yes. That's a good um, one. I, well, I just I feel like when we were kids, we witnessed, you know, everything was rehearsed. There was there was rehearsal. There was charisma. There was costumes. There was preparation and um, talent. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, <laughs> ding. and now, you know, you can like take a picture of your thong and, you know, or eat a bug or something like that. And um, <laughs> Ryan is going to count to three. And on three, we're going to blow as hard as we can and see whose mouth it ends up in. Ready? You've done that, I hear. No, we're, 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 we're we were just challenged to do that this week. Uh oh. <laughs> I mean, we it's challenged. okay if you, you want to, but you came to the table listen, with much more. You can than eat just the bug. That. Just the you bug. You can eat the bug in addition to yeah. having the talent. It was Thank a dare. You. It was dare is different. <laughs> but now it's you know, I I feel like um, there isn't a whole lot of that magic and mystery left, and you know. People are very disposable. They're, the careers are disposable and there isn't the longevity that there was and the reverence for, you know, these people's history and their experience and, you know, their classes they took with Uta Hagen and Stella Adler, yeah. and, you know, and now it's just like, I don't know what you have to do. I really don't. I think you just have to have a lot of followers and, um, you know, do something daring. I mean, gone is the day of like really, truly the triple threat, you know, where they, right. they had studio, yeah. people were signed to a studio. They do it a bit with Disney. Well, like they, they make a record with one girl and then say you're on a series and then we're going to do this movie. Mm -hmm. That's what they used to do in, in the in the olden days. I feel right. like you, now it's kind of coming back that you can sing and dance and, you know, that's that. But only if it's like from your chair and moving ever so slightly. That's I remember dancing. when when I started <laughs> and singing. imitating other people's yes. moves. Yeah. Right. right. People were like, you know, you have to decide. What do you like better? Are you going to be a singer or are you going to be an actress? Right. And I loved both, but now I feel like you can do both. Yeah. How Again. have you kept up the longevity of your career, Jolie? Because obviously you keep going and creating and both of you are still stunning and, <laughs> and, and creating projects left and right. How do you do it? How do you keep going? I mean, it goes in waves. It isn't always, it isn't always, you know, there, triumph after triumph. Sometimes, <laughs> you know, there have been some, some definite down years. I think what, what I did is sort of like try to reinvent myself and, and, and decide for people who I was going to be instead of letting people decide who you are. And so I, I have been writing and I've been, um, directing and, um, parenting and washing my face and, <laughs> <laughs> you know, just trying to keep up with, you know, life. What do you think your mom, have you talked to your mom? Like, I'm curious what somebody like that, that really was part of this old Hollywood glamor. What, what does she think now of, of, you know, an Instagrammer who's famous. I don't Does think she, she really pays too, too much no, attention. Yeah. She's, who are these people? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what is this? Yeah, yeah, I don't think she does. 
Was there a moment um, for either one of you that dawned on you and a conversation that you had with your mother that you remember influencing or impacting the journey that you uh, took to become actresses and singers and writers and directors? I think we both knew that we this is what we wanted to do. And I don't I think we watched her and we watched how magical she was like on a stage. And I think she didn't always practice what she preached, but she said to me, this is only a job and it doesn't define who you are. Now, I don't know if she always felt that way. I don't she think was, she felt that way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, we like, do that as parents, yeah. right? We say something yeah. because we know it's what we're you're she supposed wanted to say. Us, she wanted, me she to wanted us that. to feel that yeah. way about ourselves. But right. I don't think that she, you know, went, really at, went at it with that yeah. in her really heart. ever. No. God damn, Jane Fonda got that part. <laughs> right. <laughs> was there jealousy uh, amongst your um, mother and the and the friends and the and the? It's hard to be an actress. I mean, let's let's be honest. Did you feel it's the competitive? competitive I don't think it was jealousy. Yeah, I mean, I think that that it's that um, healthy competition is good. I think it makes you try harder. I yeah. think it. Um, I think sh there was competition. But, You're talking about with mom? Yeah, but she was. She, <laughs> <laughs> but there were fewer people back then. So it was kind of like exactly. she was probably up against, you know, a yeah. certain amount yeah. of women. And so who got it was. She still talks about different. how she turned down the part in The Godfather because she didn't want to, like, there was some kind of thing where she had to ha be naked and have a rose, like, like on her crotch or something like that. I don't remember that scene in The Godfather. It wasn't in. The, it wasn't in. Oh. And she didn't See, want she to have taken the part. Yeah. She, she <laughs> actually did. She actually did kind of a B movie um, when we were like preteens. <laughs> she turned down The Godfather, but, but she did Scorchy. Scorchy. <laughs> <laughs> and she, there was some very graphic sex scene and and um, the her co-star was Greg Evigan. Do you remember Greg Evigan? <laughs> no. And EJ and the Bear. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I wanted to Who I still see from I time to there. time, and I'm like, oh, there's Greg. And he I, was like 12. EJ yeah. McKay <laughs> and my best friend, Bear. That was <laughs> yes. the actual theme But she it. went to the director, and she's like, I have two daughters. And and I, when I, I you said it wouldn't be shot like this, and it's I guess it didn't. Some of it made it on the cutting room floor. But um, she was kind of prude in a way. For being a little hot seat well, you guys talked about him in your book you said something about a, a film that you guys did together in greece yes that was it sounded like a blast yeah we want to do a movie in greece can you tell us how you did it, it was it was like um it was like porkies <laughs> it was literally like teenage girls in a boarding school and most of them showed their boobs, right. except me. Those were the '80s movies, though, right? <laughs> yes, like, it was. All, it was like they when you rewatched your top off. Yeah, so so you were a prude as well. I did not show my boobs. Did. I was only 17 years old, and I was the lead. In I it. didn't show my boobs. Jolie didn't show her boobs. <laughs> but and Patricia Arquette was in it, and she didn't show. No, her boobs. she didn't show her. But <laughs> everyone else showed their boobs. No, <laughs> yes, but my mom sa said we couldn't go unless we if had we a bodyguard. So she sent this. <laughs> <laughs> bodyguard with us, which I was always like, you know, me and Patricia were trying to go drink Uzo and like whatever. We we're like, get away from us. But he turned out to be like a martial arts star oh <laughs> like for a rock. while. Jeff Speakman. <laughs> he was in a bunch of like martial arts movies. Right after he was your bodyguard, yes, you yes. went on to become a yes. you become a yes. star. You himself. made an impression. Wow. Yes. <laughs> is there a is there a role that you've turned down, Jolly, that you look back and go, dang, why didn't I do that? Or one that you wished you would have uh, been able More to wished I would have had than yeah. turned down. Yeah. Um I go to the opening of an envelope. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I, I love to work, so I've done yeah. some things that I'm not super proud of. <laughs> um, but um, I don't know. I mean, there are some things that um, that I see on the screen and I go, mm, wish I would have done that. Well, I are think- Are you getting to your speed turned down? There's, oh, no, no, I mean, no, oh, Lord. <laughs> Silly choices I've made, which we will get into a little bit deeper as, as the conversation goes on. Um, but I know that we would like to celebrate the fact that you've just uh, finished a lifetime movie that is and looks like a life changing role for you. Can you talk about it? When I when I read the script, I was like, oh, the, this this part is sort of thankless and I'm not really sure where what she's doing in the movie. I mean, she's the mother, but. Um, but what was her journey going to be? And so I begged Elizabeth Rome, who was her first 
Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Directorial debut. And, and I said, can we find some way to show what this woman is going through? So it's, it's, um, familial abuse, imprisonment, incest. It's covers some, you know, feel good movie. Yeah. Of the yeah. year. <laughs> um, it covers Uplifting. some lifting, but it, but it's a, one of their, um, I say it's not your mother's lifetime. It's ripped from the headlines based on a couple true stories about, um, fathers that have imprisoned their daughters in, wow. and, um, so there, there is this like warrior woman that I played. She's herself abused and put upon and, um, and, and Judd Nelson plays my husband. Oh my wow. goodness. And you kind of, I felt like Amazing. when I watched it, I lost Judd Nelson and Jolie Fisher. I was huh. watching this couple and, and the girl, Stephanie Scott is fabulous, but she was, um, held captive for 20 years and, he fathered children with her and it's really oh tough. Goodness. So they're showing a documentary after it. If you get to see it on Lifetime um, uh, about the very subject and about some of the true stories so that it's the tale of a monster. But the way to defeat monsters is to bring their stories to light and to sort of say this exists in the world. Right. And let's see if we if you if you're in trouble, find call Rain R-A-I-N-N. And that's the number one abuse hotline for for this sort of thing. <laughs> There's actually a need for that. Unless you're in a basement with no phone. Right. Which right. you can't really. Yeah. With your that's, babies. That's a really good point, Trisha. <laughs> when you're when you're locked up in a basement, yeah. you can't. You, you used to well, there was that story, that, that true story recently. Well, not that recently, but several years ago of those. It wasn't their father, but it, they were those yes. girls that were locked in and they escaped. Yes. And There's a this is based on the, you know, we can't say inspired by right. um Elizabeth Fritzel, okay. who her her father, Josef Fritzel, in Austria, kept her underground for twenty four years and had six children with her. Wow. And so they made this a lighter story yeah. being just in prison just for four twenty. Year, four, four years less. less. Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, let's get back to fancy Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's get out of the dungeon. Um, uh, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we will dive back into fancy Hollywood. And all the Star Wars <laughs> that are sitting at the table. We're better together with Alan and Heather. You guys went to see Star Wars. Um, at, there's a there's a story about it in there somewhere. Do you remember seeing um, your sister in the movie for the first time? I feel like we had a copy of it. We did, in but Malibu. I remember the first time that we saw it was at the Avco Cinema oh, yeah. in the theater, and we didn't. We knew that we had a sister, and we hadn't spent a lot of time with her. And that's seventy six, so we were little, little, little. and um, and you know there was this princess, and and there, and she was a badass, and she was. <laughs> Oh my god! Beautiful, and she had a half of British accent, and she was, you know, <laughs> carrying a gun, and we were like, "Oh my god, this is exciting!" Um, and then, you, Did you know, know that that princess was your sister. Yet? Well, I think we knew when we sat down to watch the we, movie. Yeah, yeah, we we knew we hadn't really hung we hadn't out with seen, her at all. Yeah. Seen her yet? Well, um, Star Wars was the first movie I was allowed to see in the movie theaters. So, and we were so poor that we put, we made the popcorn before and we went and just stuffed it in our jackets and went and sat in the front row. And, and well, I, of course, saw Harrison Ford. And however many years later, when I meant to beat him, I just blurted like, oh my God, I was, ah! I, I was the least person of class that you could ever imagine. After I told myself to shut the heck up, I just went, blurted it out. Oh my God, you were the one I saw in the movie. You changed my life. It was the first movie I ever saw. And he looked at me and he said, don't ever tell that story again it tells our age difference so sit on down and looked, at, <laughs> looked at the director live and right and said well she's more interesting than most <laughs> but that um movie of course changed uh, my life and years later when uh harrison was having the afi honors awards given to him carrie and i got together at her house and this is leading to me wondering about how much time you spent in her bedroom as sisters because I didn't even get greeted by the door. I just heard her call out from the, I'm coming yeah. to the bedroom. <laughs> uh, did you spend a lot of time with your sister in the bedroom? Uh, oh, most, the, of the time, yeah. most of the time we were with her was in her bedroom. <laughs> yeah. And I Whether think, or not people were there. Yeah. Like it was either a house full of people. You were still in the bedroom. Even her. at her parties, she would end up in the bedroom. <laughs> And holding court. You know, people, yeah, she was receiving lots people, of people yes. in there laying on the bed. But we had some incredible times at the dinner table and, yeah. you know, just hanging out. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah, that was her, that was her, like yours, yeah. like your home. Yeah, exactly. Is we, that well, what yeah, influences that in my room? Yeah, no, of course. <laughs> we hold court. Um, is, is that what influences you to uh, be in your bedroom when you do your podcast? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I mean, I think, I think people at parties either go to the kitchen or, or, you know, that's usually the place of congregating. It's not necessarily in the bedroom. I don't know if I'll be having the parties bedroom's at the there. end of the party. Right. I, I don't know if I'll be having any parties in my bed. We, but. we looked up the, um, the speeches too that because you guys probably were meeting to so that you didn't overlap because they were both introducing him and had their own individual speeches and, the, and you guys it was it was fun to watch uh, oh, for so you. long ago yes. yeah it's this this, um, this did you love working tribute. with him of course yeah yes i mean he really is an, an astounding gentleman yeah you know um i, I mean it when i mean he he this is a, a nice way to talk about it he really saved my life you know when i got together with ellen I was told um, uh, that I would not get that movie mm. and I was fired for taking Ellen to the volcano premiere. And I want to get into this moment with you. Obviously, we shared this time. You shared this time with Ellen being your very dear friend. And um, I was fired from my from my Fox deal and told that I wasn't going to get six days, seven nights. And if it wasn't for Harrison, uh, who stood up for me and said, I am frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn who you're fucking. We, we have a romantic comedy to make. And that was the last studio picture that I did for 10 years. And Laura oh, Dern gosh. says the same thing about her career shortly after, you know, she was the the onset uh catalyst for her coming out party. I mean, the, on the show. Yes, yes, So yes, Laura yes. says the same thing. We we did a reunion of the show and she reminded everybody that, you know, everybody fired her and said you'll never work again. Why are you doing this? Unbelievable. It was a, you know, it, well, was, it was a different time. Thank it was God. a different time. And let's talk about that because, of course, there's the famous puppy episode where Ellen famously came out. But that was a moment in changing. I would imagine uh, you were so wonderful and hilarious and funny on that show. I don't remember. the. I mean, by setting. My, I didn't even know that the Ellen show existed. And I, that was the first show I watched and got to see. I couldn't even believe it. Like sitcoms. I was so naive. And that's the first night I met you. But that relationship that you had with her was both on and off camera, uh, a glorious friendship that I got to witness. And I'm sure a life changing experience leading up to that for you. Can you can you tell us how you got that role, first of all, and what the little bit of that journey was leading up to the very famous uh, puppy episode? Well, I like to say that uh, it was so good of Ellen to be in my show. I was, <laughs> <laughs> um, that's not exactly true. Um, I auditioned for 28 pilots the year before I got Ellen. Stop and it. as we that, do, that made me <laughs> spill my drink. I was like, wait, I didn't even know. But as, as we do, were... when at that, you know, it, especially pilot that, season. Yeah. So yeah. we would go from show to show oh and I tested for a couple and I didn't get it. And and I went on this audition and 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 got close to the part. But then it went away and it was these friends of mine, the original incarnation of Ellen. And then the next season they were replacing people. And I went back in, did the same scene, which is really weird, but I did it with Ellen it, at ABC in that big theater where you're, you're all the executives yeah. are in the dark. Again, and you're down times. there. Yes. And you yeah, have yeah, to audition exactly. for executives now and yes. have chemistry reads. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, she, and I made her laugh. Uh, and I yes. mean, of course, she makes all of us laugh. And it was it was a ride. It was a journey. It was her journey and not mine. I was along for the ride, but uh, but spectacularly so. And yes. Um, you know, I saw, I saw her free, I saw her, um, her, uh, her, when she was described it as being in a cage and I saw the cage open and I saw her fly um, and I, and then of course it got very, very dark. And I remember <laughs> camping out at that house and fighting away paparazzi and you were there and, and police and things like that because of, you know, the statement that she was making, but she was really just, um, being herself, being herself. Yeah. What, so, what what were you feeling about the uh, obviously you are both very politically involved but what what were you feeling about the movement then there was obviously you were right next to it um and watching it bubble and how did that affect you what was going on in your mind about I, it I I don't remember ever feeling like there was not a place for 
gay people in any in, in on television on screen anything because we grew up with a Lots, lot of yeah. gay people around us you know it was it was you know uh, sh- uh, showbiz people and agents and um our uncle who yeah. um passed away of aids in 1995 and it was he was closeted and never really came out we all knew that he was gay it was and it was a he just didn't talk about yeah. it but um, yeah, that's the so way. I don't remember. Yeah, that was yeah. the thing. We um, so we. I don't remember feeling. I I remember feeling like so. Yeah, we're gonna do this, right? But I think that there was like a little bit of nervousness of like, you know, how is this gonna be received, and is the show gonna go Continue. on? Continue. Yes, that's true. And what did happen? Well, the show went on, but it went on to a. Uh, partial season i mean i'm thinking of there was one episode where we were sitting in the cafe and you and chris duddy and gil younger the director were sitting at the table behind us <laughs> and ellen and i lean over and you're like pass the salt or whatever you said it was funny <laughs> <laughs> you're saying i was an extra on the you're, show yeah you were an extra <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the part she gave me yeah <laughs> but i also remember it being uh you know a movement i mean we did go to the march on washington yes. with a million people People, and we mistakenly got out of the van. Do you remember over by a monument where we had so far to walk to get to the beginning of the march where you guys were going to speak? And I was going to be holding the banner proudly um, with Matthew Shepard's parents, yes. Julie and Melissa, wow. you guys. And we were and I'm like holding the banner and walking in front of a mill. But we got swarmed. Do you remember that? Yes. Yes, for sure. Yeah. In a good way. No, I, I think we didn't really know. We didn't. We're, you were doing your documentary and we had cameras and uh, not thinking that in a million gay people are going to notice that Ellen DeGeneres just got out of a van. I mean, we weren't thinking at all. Right. <laughs> it was quite a phenomenal experience, yeah. that moment and being a part of that change, obviously, is my biggest badge of honor that I would. That's it just is extraordinary. But the. Um, uh, the repercussions of that and, 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 uh, in both good and bad, um, the consequences were felt by me very strongly, obviously. Yeah. Did you feel consequences having been involved in that? What did you do once the situation kind of exploded, which it really, it really did in kind of a not so positive way for a while. Yeah, mm-hmm. we did. A, we did those the, that truncated um, season, and everybody thought the show was over. So they start. They stopped watching because I think it got a little bit unfunny. It got a little soapboxy, and and mm-hmm. and Ellen would admit to that. The writers would admit to uh-huh. that, and then we sort of just like trickled away. There was no fanfare. There was no right. big, you know, um, rap season rap party or the, the, it was like four and a half seasons, you know? And, um, I actually didn't get, I didn't get the same, um, reaction in my career. I actually got a deal at Disney right after that wow. to do a pilot. And if they didn't pick that up, I was going to be pay, you know, whatever. I, all I wanted to do was work. Um, but I played the part in the puppy episode that I think was um, like the world. So, so her best friend, Paige Clark said, you've been lying to me and I don't, and I love you and I I don't really want to be you, but I, I'm going to need a minute. And I think that that's what the world said Uh when Ellen DeGeneres and Ellen Morgan came out is like, give us a minute. Has she been trying to fool us all along or how do we need to figure out if we're going to accept her, which I think my character did. So I didn't go. I I was down a different path. That's so interesting. Um, Let's take a quick break. And when we come back, I want to just rewind a little bit to the puppy episode. All right. We're better together with Anne and Heather. So just talking about that, I know that that was historically, and we've talked about this a bit, that that week of the puppy episode airing was the same week that your volcano premiere came out. Is that correct? Oh, yeah. They were, Well, the puppy episode was Tuesday night. I think you guys shot and my volcano premiere was that Thursday. And I had just met that? Ellen on Sunday night. Like I wasn't. Go, but most people don't know that. It was kind of a shocking, like, what, but, but I was told that I was going to be fired from my vol- volcano contract, my Fox contract. It wasn't that I was standing up for a relationship that I had had for 
years. It was something. It new. was something. It was That's brand new. It just was the absolute wrong thing to tell me. Here was a woman who, who came out on a TV show I didn't even know she had, but was on the cover of Time magazine, changing the world for what exactly they were telling me I wasn't allowed to do, right. and she was encouraging that. And I said, "That's just not right. That like, yeah. if you know I'm me, that her. doesn't sit right yeah. with me. That there's no way. My father was one of the first guys to die of AIDS in 1983." I, my whole life was living in a thought that if people could come out and tell their truth, yes, that they'd survive, they, that they would survive. Yeah. So, so that that trumped everything uh, uh, for me. But most people don't know that I had just met her three days and she, <laughs> before the premiere. She was yeah, worried hussy. about you. You're a hussy. I mean, really, she was worried about you and said didn't didn't want to oh, go. God, for right? Sure. Yeah, well, for sure. And and that's how much fear was even in. The leadership of oh, that, right. yeah. I mean, that the ramifications for for her, she was she was already looking at what was a little bit devastating. I mean, she had no idea what was about to fall on her, but um, but was, was very concerned about, you know, being open in public. She wouldn't hold my hand. I mean, there was the, she had lived such a life of, yeah. of safety and control over that that it, it took a while to massage and make her giggle yeah. uh, giggle uh, with the with the freedom that um, came from from her bold bold and extraordinary life changing <laughs> choice. You know, <laughs> <laughs> um, but you both also have beautiful families. Could you talk about uh, your children and? Uh, <laughs> well, I, I have girls. You have girls. I've got she three boys. three boys. She's got three girls. I have two. Uh, wait, you remember Chris had two sons. Yeah. And he still does. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's I've, good to know. I was stepmother before I was a mother. Uh -huh. And they're grown and married and have... Four children. She's a grandma. I'm glamma. Oh, that wow. Was glam. <laughs> pronounce glam that mama. Pronounce Wait, that. That is Actually, it's be grandma. Little always. Bowie, uh, who's now just turned six years old, when she was like two years old, she was holding my hand in public and she was dragging me and she was like, glamma, glamma. I was like, make sure you pronounce that right. <laughs> <laughs> make it loud for everyone to hear. No grr. Um, it's a hard L. <laughs> and, and Cameron, my oldest son, is in the band Midland, which is a really hot country band. Yeah. Oh, stadiums and and they both are directing Colin and Cameron and then Skylar is a college age beauty she is smart she's a beautiful dancer she's into film she's a radical feminist bisexual <laughs> now is telling me that as well uh -huh. and um <laughs> we'll see what is happens that on the that. on the list of just adjectives or is that <laughs> something that my, shock you? she's just told me that so we'll, we'll see what Holden happens. thinks is just trendy really it might be it's very <laughs> well, what was your reaction Cool. But don't, <laughs> but don't you think that, that well, what else are you going to say? Yeah, what else? <laughs> yeah. You guys kind of trailblaze that in your, you know, when you think about that now it's just not a thing anymore, right? Well, it is interesting that it is kind of taken we, on as we don't, you just said, Trisha, like now it's kind of chic. Like, yeah, I'm, 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 you know, I'm bisexual. Girls yeah. say it. And, and of, of course, when they say it in front of me, I just think it's the most, that's the most hilarious thing in the world. I like, don't think oh, it's okay, as you are, uh, right in <laughs> trendy <laughs> for the boys. No, no I think it's, trendy. Trendy it's a little bit boys. more difficult. To, yeah. To, 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 yeah. 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 No, um, my son um, always man. makes the joke that he had to come out as straight to me because <laughs> I fantasized about having you know, a, gay a gay son that would travel and stay with me forever. And, you know. No. Yeah. Well, Trisha, your sons sing with you. Is that yes. not not only do you do the seventies, but you you did it live as yes. we well, have, have seen well, we, we consider you the new Von Trapps. We can't wait to get back on the stage because we were it was like this whole new chapter of life that started. We started doing it because both of us missed music. And um, we're, we're both musicians and hadn't been doing that for a long time, like at least professionally, you know, uh -huh. singing around the house, whatever. And um, so one day he just said, hey, come sing a song with me. And so I did. We sat down and we recorded, you know, we were just like singing. We love 70s music. And we started posting it like it was almost like a like a church thing on Sunday, like, uh -huh. like it was our church. It was us yeah. just being loving and sharing our spirit, you know, yes. and, and it's good too. That's, we started doing too. it and then we, people started requesting songs and, oh. you know, and, you know, our little one would ham it up wilder. And now he's an amazing piano player. And, um, Hudson, my oldest is 26 and he is, um, a, an amazing 
songwriter, singer. He Hudson Thames. He just came out with um, a new song last week. And he's he's incredible. You're just a family of he's talent, incredible. aren't you? All of you. It just happened. Just <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, really well, uh, we have started to do something on Better Together, where oh, I don't know how this has started to escalate so quickly, but uh, a friend of yours, of course, uh, Justina Machado, um, and I sung the first Better Together duet, <laughs> and um, nice. we are uh, we are proposing that perhaps you two would sing. Um, a three-part harmony song. Not now. With, with me. No not worry. now. Not at this yes. moment. Um, but, I was uh, like, can we work our... it out first? Can we work it out? Yeah. <laughs> yes. There's no. nothing you take I the love low, more you take than the being high, in I'll take middle. Yeah. Um, but uh, it would be an honor to be able to sing yes. with you all yeah. and do um, a view, uh, video with one of our most extraordinary uh, artists, Rowan Daly, who is, is such a cool cinematographer and yeah. uh, would love it if You've you been would join us in a better better together t- tribe of singers that would be a real <laughs> delight is that a yes sure. yes oh, yeah. oh, yeah. yes we're all cheering um what's next are there what's snacks involved yeah, there's always snacks, snacks. Like, if there will be better than the, the pita and sour cream i think i put out if, if my sons aren't with me during the week i share custody. was that sour cream it, it was, it got sour cream did you dip it's just it's just well, with you're like a little bit of feta cheese so we want it we can we can we lead this to somewhere that we want to go yes. i yes. better together we so 35 years ago mom started connie stevens um forever spring That's, product line yes. she had a machine called the time machine it works on the muscles under your skin builds collagen she had the patent now we've decided that we are picking up the torch i um, love it and we are going to go forward with forever spring and maybe it will be fs still fisher, fisher stevens. stevens wow and it'll be a new generation we want to include our kids wow. can, yeah. can you better us with giving us some of the the collagen yeah fantastic we brought you some oh my gosh you guys it has been so wonderful to have you on our show we we would love to ask if uh, should we ask can we do a Uh no thanks yes please sure no thanks yes please yes please i would say no thank you to fear because I have been plagued by a lot of fear in the past years. Wow. And I, um, I'm i just starting to release that feeling. Um, you know, things that we went through. Our, our mom had a stroke and, you know, different things that we experienced. We had to, like, sell her home. And um, then COVID is, you yeah. know, just a lot of health fear, a lot of... Politics has been super yes, terrifying. Yes, a lot of terrifying feelings about the world, the state of the world, and the future for our children and things like that. So I am ready to to get fearless again. Nice. Yes, please. To yes, fearless. please. And I think that, that that's the good part of aging, actually. It is. is. That's the one, that's the thing that's like you give less of a crap about yeah. things and yeah. you, you know... Um, the, the Women's March, to tie it back to Princess Leia for a minute, I was so, <laughs> it was so cool to see we were, Princess oh, Leia yeah. kind yeah. of take over yeah. as the, you know, it was so the symbol short, of the first support. March was such it a was short time right, after. right after she passed right. away. Yeah, it was like oh. three weeks, three or three and a half yeah. weeks. And it was, it was those, all the different versions of Carrie. It wasn't just Princess Leia, you know, it was like. People with signs that said Carrie Fisher sent me. Yeah. And then yes. the rebel, the you know, yeah, the, I have chills. The, was, you know, yeah. the bikini clad metal lay on her side and the, you know, the typical one with the guy with this, you know. And and even the later years, one of her just being open about, you know, her struggles with mental illness and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So I think that was very empowering to a lot of people to watch her you know, be so open about that. And oh, I her one they, woman show was they, yeah. tremendous. Yeah. They, a lot of people said the older iteration of Princess Leia too, when she went back and was yes. more midlife, was the one that was really the most General. powerful character. She, which That was a beautiful performance. Oh one thing we didn't mention, I know we're wrapping up, is that in the pandemic, we have opened Fisher Place, which is in South Central LA. And it's a the first group home for the Alcott Center, which has been in LA dealing with homelessness, mental health challenges, addiction. Um, uh, It's called the Alcott Center. It's on Robertson, but this is their first 
group home and they've honored us with so it bears our name it's wow. full it's for men only now there's 43 beds it's full and they're thriving and they help get them jobs when they're ready to sort of reimmerse themselves in and the women's ones and, coming next yes that's oh, what our our, our plan is well it's yeah. so important you cool. really see that now in LA and I'm sure in big cities that mental health has become such an issue with COVID oh. um, and the city being so strapped. In yeah, cities, they're, they're worried just... about it with with teens, too, because of the isolation. And, and you know, there's a, there's been a sense of hopelessness about, like, what does it all really mean? Like, you know, there's not not that looking forward to prom and, right. you know, these rite of passage things that they're missing out on. Yes. So, I know it's heartbreaking. I I, uh, I think we all think yeah. our children where when is that when is that movement going to come in that infuses the truly the spirit of our children in, yeah. in a way that they say there is something for me to look forward to after um, this demise of a culture yeah. and, and the fear and the fear ar around. So it. I have a yes, please. All right. Okay. I want to be touched again. I want to touch people. Oh. I want to. Well, <laughs> it's not that kind of a show, Joey. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's my show. Um, <laughs> no, but you know, I noticed yes. it with the kids when they, we all are like huggers and we. It's so we weird. Laid all over each other. Yeah. Yep. You know, our friends. Even walking we, in, not right, hugging. I know. Yes. You're like, just like, I noticed Hi. it with Golden the other yeah. day. Yeah. Where, you know, I mean, we, you know, that they, they, they walk in and they're like, hey, what's up? Yes. You know what I mean? And and it, because they're afraid of yeah, it. They yes. the elbow. Yeah, they get elbow. But well, no, yeah. We've, become, we've become stripped of, 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 like, of our romance with each other. Our like, fun yes. puddling. I really, and, and really gone. bad for the first person that I hug really, really <laughs> <Right>. hard. <laughs> I, I even wonder I if it will come back. The handshakes. <laughs> I wonder if we'll, I wonder if. I wonder if it will. It will be a very, very long time. I think it'll come back. Yeah, I yeah. think it'll I think be a it long will. time, though. I think we should just. Yes, yeah, so let's. But bow. yes, let's say yes, please, to a, a moment in time where we can, we, where we can, well, we can see be free our, again. Our free uh, passion yeah. and and. Um, I mean, don't you yes, freak out when you watch movies and all the people are like yes, at a concert yes, yelling yes. and like, you're like you're spitting on him. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. It looks so strange. I, it, you you two are are activists warrior spirits and I know that you're doing something that I would just like to uh, share uh, with our audience because it's something that Heather and I care deeply about and I know everybody listening does too not only are we looking at a place where we need to help our small businesses but we need to help the people who are needing to work in our small businesses and big businesses and I this would is love a crazy like immediate thing right yes, now that right there's now. a bill that can pass a standalone bill that can pass it did not make it as part of the COVID package but by March 15th they can pass Pass a fifteen dollar minimum wage. People deserve it. They're living yes. below standards. Below uh, there, there's forty three states where they do not pay. They can pay as little as two dollars and thirteen cents an hour for people that are tipped. Um, and that, and especially in COVID, women predominantly um, are in the service industry where they're where they're told, um, "Take your mask off. I want to see you pretty smile." So, do you want a tip? Let me see what that what you look like under that. Oh and it is. Uh, offensive at the very very low end of the scale <laughs> and harassment um at the very high end and um and so there is a bill right now go to one fair wage they are waging the war to to instill $15 minimum wage across the country right on thank you guys for <laughs> I only speak that. in sound bites <laughs> <laughs> you're really good at it speaking of which we're going to end on one of her sound bites oh yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, in a toast do. it's good oh, yes okay I hope I got it right. We're going to live spectacularly for those who are no longer here. Cheers. 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 Cheers to both. Okay, Until next so time. Until <laughs> next time. Live in loving kindness. And don't be a dick. <laughs> <laughs> We're better together with Anne and Heather. Well, that was a great example of better together. I mean, come on, those sisters are so good together. It's almost like they live the same life. And they let each other speak so freely. If I went on with my sister, uh, we, we just scream over each other. You wonder why I'm such an interrupter? It's because of my sisters. I had two sisters and we just we just talk as loud. The loudest one that keeps talking the longest is the one who gets their point across. <laughs>
<laughs> and they were they yeah, were, they were very respectful of each were. other. I would have liked to see them throw down. You hear that, Megan? Cat fight. I'm, I, I kind of want the cat fight to happen next. So, like, with all due respect, Jolie and, and, and Patricia, you're way too tame for us. <laughs> we'll have my sisters on for Let's that. We'll have your sisters on next. <laughs> oh, what a joy it was to have everybody join us. I hope you enjoyed the interview as much as we did. And until next time, don't be a dick. Oh, stole your line. Stole Stole it. That's what happens when you admit you're 50. My, you know my line like, is better than yours. Don't be a dick. I know. We're making t-shirts and hats that actually, say don't be a dick. It actually suits my personality. No, it doesn't. It See, doesn't. everybody thinks I'm the wild one. I'm not. You're the wild one. Until next time, everybody. Living love and kindness. And don't be a dick. And a big, big thanks to our Better Together team. That's Ryan Tillotson, Sebastian Alcala. And you, Elizabeth Keener. Oh, thanks, Ryan. And of course, Ann and Heather. We're better together with Ann and Heather. And here are those tribute speeches that Ann and Carrie Fisher did for Harrison Ford for his AFI honor. Enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, from the film Six Days, Seven Nights, please welcome Ann Hayes. Hi, Harry. It's my pet name for him. He didn't know it until just now either. Well, allow me to gush. I, um, I spent a hell of a lot more than six days and seven nights with this man. Yes. And that makes me feel good. <laughs> um, I mean, I knew that this dude was voted sexiest man alive, okay? And um, I knew that he was the hero of the world and all that stuff. Um, here's what I didn't know. I didn't know that he deserved it. All of it. And more. I know you all can relate to this. Um, you meet your hero sometimes and you're like, oh. I wish I hadn't met you. Shoot. Okay, not so with Harrison. He is, uh, God, supportive, inspirational, professional, funny, and cute, which is so cool that he has all of those qualities. But he is truly everything you can imagine a hero is. And um, it's, a, it's just an honor and, and true joy for me to be able to tell you that you are the greatest. And I thank you from the bottom of my soul for everything that you are. Really. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Miss Carrie Fisher. Hi, my name is Carrie, and I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, wrong group. Well, actually, maybe not. <laughs> Whenever I start to talk, Harrison gets nervous. You really should stop getting so nervous because it turns out I have a terrible memory, uh, which should relax a lot of people in this room. Um, when I first saw Harrison on the set of Star Wars, uh, he struck me as, I don't know, epic in a way. He had that icon energy. He had that Tracy Bogart thing. I was 19 and he was 63. Uh, but, but he looked 33 or under. Um, well, I became completely infatuated with him. It was uh, like a high school crush, which was weird for a dropout. Um, but I became obsessed with Harrison long before it became fashionable. I was a real trendsetter in that sense. I started a craze. Uh, but the guy is not just a pretty face. 
He majored in philosophy in college, and he would quote philosophers in interviews. With this film, you have to take a giant leap of faith. I was totally dazzled. I wanted to quote philosophers in my interviews. So when I got back home, I started getting tutored in philosophy. I think Nietzsche had Harrison in mind when he said, Stille Nacht, Heilige Nacht, Alle Schleft. Well, maybe not Alle Schleft, but the Stille Nacht, absolutely, definitely. <laughs> Straw Hut Media.